Hi guys, this is Cy from Cy Nice Software. Uh, today I wanted to do a uh, practical example with uh, Disperse. Uh, we're going to paint up a scene here. Uh, it's uh, sort of an outdoor scene. I uh, just want some random wild flowers. Make it look like it's sort of in the wilderness a little bit. Um, you know, some ivy on the back walls, uh, long grass, some weeds, lily pads, all sorts of different things. So we're going to recreate this scene really quick. Well, as quickly as we can. <laughs> all right. So uh, first thing, let's just get rid of this. I'm going to delete this disperse and we'll go out to our um, perspective window and we'll take a look at what we have here. So we have a couple of... Um, weeds, uh, we have some uh, piece, samples of grass, uh, we have some ivy, um, sort of, this is I guess like clover and stuff, uh, we have a fish, some lily pads, and some flowers. So first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to add this to disperse. So I'm going to go to down to Sinai Software and we will select disperse and throw that into the scene. And we'll start adding our objects to disperse. So with this selected, uh, we'll grab, let's see, uh, the weeds, the clover, grass, ivy. Uh, we'll throw in our lily pads, a uh, little flower. Might as well throw in the fish. Um, and then we have our reeds over here. And then we go over here and we have all sorts of little weeds. So let me just go ahead and throw those in and then some longer sort of grass and flowers. All right, so we got this all in here. Let me just actually, I'm gonna leave this in pyramid mode. Uh, that's the most efficient mode to actually create stuff in. Um, and let's get back into our camera view. So if you haven't seen Disperse, Disperse is our painting tool. So pretty much you can, I'll just hide the materials here. So I have water, uh, grounds, mountains, different types of stuff. Um, what Disperse does is it gives me the ability, oops, gives me the ability to paint on any surface. And once I've painted onto that surface, it'll actually go into a single mesh, uh, essentially a proxy. Um, let me just go erase this really quick. Um, so you have quite a few different painting modes. You have single uh, painting modes, you have multiple painting modes, erasing, object replacing. There's a whole bunch of different stuff in here. Uh, I advise you to you know, go through a lot of the other um, about tutorials with this to deeply get a little more into um, how things work. All right, so uh, let's just turn on edge faces here. Now, all right, so um, first thing I wanna do before I do anything is I wanna actually go in and paint uh, some stuff in here and then turn on my color variation and sort of just take a look um, to try and get that right first. So I'm doing a smaller render. I'm not rendering this whole scene when it's all done um, at the end. So let's just do a quick little render here and I'll turn on uh, the... Uh, select region, let me just render this little area here. All right, so right now there's no color variation on this. So um, pretty much the objects, they're all look the same, uh, not very original, um, not really realistic. Uh, so we wanna add in, introduce in some color variation and texture variation into this. So let's cancel this render and I'm gonna go down to color and texture variation. I'm gonna turn this on. Uh, I'm gonna leave the number at 12, 12 different variations generally going to be enough. I'm going to slightly turn up the hue shift. I want this to be at two. Um, saturation will bring up quite a bit, a little brightness and a little contrast. Uh, and then we'll do a quick test render of this. All right. So um, now as it's rendering, you're actually see we get sort of a different nice, some are brighter, some are darker, some are a little more green, some are less green. So, so that's what we want. We want it to have a nice variation in our plants. That's what makes things look more real than having a whole, um, say, thing of grass field and every blade of grass is exactly the same color. That just doesn't work. So with that done, I'm sort of happy of where this is. I mean, I might play with this at the very end, but, you know, at least I got a good idea of my variation. Now, the first time that rendered, it set up those materials. So the next time I render that, 
it actually doesn't need to go through and do a lot of calculations to sort of figure out all those textures. It's already sort of figured out its mathematics of what it's going to do. All right, so let's stop that. Um, now that we have a good idea of what's going on, um, and we could almost leave those lily pads there. Um, they're fine. Uh, we could go through, th throw some flowers on them, um, or throw some um, reeds back in here, or start with the grass. It doesn't really matter. I think I'm going to start at the very back. So I'm going to start to go ahead and throw in my ivy. So I'm going to select my, I'm actually going to minimize this. I'm going to select my multiple brush. Uh, I'm going to turn collisions on to about maybe um, seven. Uh, it's only a guess size. If I just paint some here. Yeah, it's, uh, that's pretty good. Let me just erase that real quick. Um, and we'll go ahead and we'll just start painting this back wall here. So I'm going to want sort of anywhere there's a little green, uh, I want to cover up with my ivy. So just simply just go basically all around the back here. And that should be good. Now, if I have gone too heavy, uh, let's just go put a whole bunch of ivy here. If I've gone too heavy in an area, I can actually go to my erase brush and I can say, you know, chance of erase 20. Um, and what that'll do is it'll slightly start to erase. I'm not erasing everything, so that's kind of handy if you, you just want to cull some stuff out. All right, so the next thing I'm going to want to do is I want to lay down my grass. Now, technically, yes, I could use a scatter. Um, program or uh, plug-in for this which we have another we have one coming out next month um, just for this whole tutorial I'm just gonna use disperse on everything so I'm gonna want to go in paint in my grass but more importantly I want to paint in my grass where my camera view is so I don't want to be you know sort of covering up all this stuff with uh, say basically that what's not in my camera view all right, so let me just go into the top view, and I'm going to make my brush quite a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to go paint in all the grass that I need. Now, I'm going to need to turn down my collisions, and I'm going to also want to turn up the amount. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and we'll just throw some grass in here really quickly. Uh, we don't need it to be completely covered. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff that's going to go on in here. Um, you can see, as soon as I'm done with my, my paint stroke, uh, it turns uh, the, the painted objects right into the single mesh. So that's what really speeds up everything. That was always the problem with Max's painter, was you just ended up with thousands of objects. It was really, you know, it's, it's a nice thing to have as a painting tool, but if you have just thousands of objects in your scene, uh, it makes it impossible to move around. All right, let's get back to my camera view. And that's not bad. I can put, you know, just a couple here and there. And now I want to make my brush a little smaller because, of course, I want to go, you know, somewhat around the edges. So I'm just set this down to 80, and we'll just paint in some grass on the edge. And I'm going to undo that. Uh, that is a little close. Um, I have my objects up really high as well. So let's just set this down to 20. And we'll go paint that again. Yeah, that's better. Uh, and we'll just put some grass right at the front. And that should be good. All right. Next thing I'm going to want to do is uh, I'm going to want to get some reeds and weeds in here in the... Uh, in the main part of this water. So um, I'm going to go select all my reeds and I'm also going to select some reeds as well. So that'll give me a pretty good sort of dense collection of different stuff. Um, weeds, reeds, all sorts of different stuff that I want in there. Um, and we'll just go throw in some here. It's all actually kind of therapeutic just going ahead and paint, painting these things all over. All right, so that's not bad. I'm um, gonna probably want a couple of more lily pads. Um, so I'm definitely gonna turn up my, oh, that's way too much, let me undo that. Let's make this brush, I'm gonna say the paint amount of four and make my brush just a little bigger and get a couple more lily pads in here. And that's not bad. 
Um, I can actually put some fish in here as well. Um, so with this whole thing, um, I was playing around with it earlier, you know, sort of any of these objects that I have in here, of course, I've turned on, you know, rotation because I'm going to want going to want everything to be, you know, sort of random rotation. I want to unify all their scale. Um, I just want to make sure there's good differences out of this, um, sort of even down. And that's all my objects are applied to. And then individual objects actually have their own settings as well. So uh, I can sort of multiply that a little bit so I can get um, random rotation on all objects and the individual object, which just gives me a little more um, randomness out of it. All right, um, I think we're not too bad. We're covering that in. All right, the next thing I'm probably going to want to do is I'm going to want to put in some clover. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make my brush just a little bigger again. And we'll just go starting to add in this clover. And I want this to be sort of random in chunks, you know, like little um, pretty big areas. Actually, let me just turn this up a little more and make my brush a little bigger that way we can just put a little more in here and that's what I want I want to sort of just scatter this around um, just sort of in random chunks um, not not something you know all together and and too random but all right um, that's not bad I'm gonna do a quick render of this so I'm gonna I'm gonna pause this up and we'll take a look at where we're at right now all right, so uh, that's rendered enough. Got sort of halfway in there. I mean, you can sort of see what's going on. We got our grass in here. A um, little bit of variation. We could probably go more with the colors. Um, you can see we need to actually get a little closer to the edge of this. Uh, we're seeing the underneath texture there. Um, but yeah, all in all, it was quite easy to fill this in. So um, let's continue on with this real quick. I'm um, going to go in, touch in some of this grass here. Uh, I'm also going to... I like the clover. It's scattered pretty nicely. Maybe just a little more down here. And then we'll just start throwing in like our weeds and taller grass and all sorts of stuff in the end. All right. So let me cancel this render. Let's hit stop and close this down. All right. So first thing, let's just go address this grass up front. Uh, so I just want to make sure that I'm getting this right in the edge. And maybe a spot there and a spot there. All right. So next thing I'm going to want to look at is I have my wildflowers. So let's go start scattering these all over the place. Definitely want to get, you know, sort of randomly placing these guys. Um, I don't want, you know, too much grass showing through. I definitely just want it as a base. So, I mean, I probably didn't need to go as heavy on the grass as I did. Um, you know, it's probably, um, I could have filled the, say the holes with weeds and reeds and all sorts of other things. All right. So that's not too bad. Um, I also, let's go in. I need to find, uh, well, weeds. We definitely want to throw in a lot of these. So that's what we want in the end. So we'll just go ahead and we're just going to put these randomly sort of around where the clover is. I don't want to go covering up all my nice clover. Uh, so, yeah, just enough where I get some random weeds. Now, um, the other thing about this is um, our display modes. Um, you could actually leave this in um, uh, full mesh all the time. Uh, but, it, you know, it's, it's a lot of, uh, you'll probably be showing a lot of polys. So, um, we did throw in a mode that you can actually just take a look at one object. So you could actually go and put that in original mode. Um, and this sort of just gives you a good idea. So I can go through and say, all right, well, let's look at our grass. Um, in this case, it's going to tell me I have too many polys and it's going to chuck me into pyramid mode. If I really wanted to see that grass, I can actually say force display mode. And uh, then I can throw it in original mesh. Now, it'll probably take quite a while for it to draw and could have a chance of freezing up max as well. All right, so it's gone through and it showed my grass. Um, I have it selected, of course, so it's gonna be white. Uh, if I turn off edged faces here, let me just uh, fire this up and let's just turn off that. We can actually see the grass a little better. 
Um, but yeah, it sort of gives us a little more of an idea. So of, um, you know, if I'm looking at a specific object. Um, in this case, um, I actually want to see um, our weeds. Uh, so we have grass, weeds. Oh, these are, um, yeah, so we want weeds. Let's go down to a hey, lily weeds. Okay, and that was the one I was sort of painting here, and it gives me sort of an idea of how many I have. So uh, I'm just going to close this down. I'm going to leave that in real mode, and I'm just going to go paint some more of these. And yeah, it is going to be a little slower, so I'm going to go ahead and put the display mode back into Pyramid and close this up, and I should be able to paint these a little easier. But yeah, it just gives me that, you know, that sort of, um, I'm hiding all the rest of the stuff so I can sort of get a little uh, better look at the landscape. Uh, we toyed with um, a whole bunch of different ways to do this, and we might change it in the future if we come up with a better way. Uh, but pretty much you're seeing all the objects or a single object um, to sort of make it easy. All right, and uh, I mean, we're pretty much there of what we wanted. I mean, we could throw a couple of fish in here. And um, in this case, uh, I'm gonna paint my fish directional um, because I believe they're facing, if I, yep, I can, if I hold down the mouse, I can see my actual object and there's my fish. Now I've actually gone down and um, my fish are already underneath the water. If I go to, where's fish? Cause I painted them on the water. They are underneath uh, by negative 18 units. Uh, so, yeah, they're not floating on top of the water. They're not dead fish. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the last thing I'd probably want to do is possibly, you know, add a little more ivy in the back um, than what I had. Maybe spread it out a little more. Um, but you can see how easy it is uh, with Disperse. I mean, you're pretty much painting on any surface, on any object. Uh, and uh, it just makes your life a little easier because you're not constrained like a... Um, a scattering tool where you're constrained to one object. Uh, so that's it guys. Um, any questions, go to our forum. Um, you can go, if you've never used this tool before, uh, you can go to our website at uh, sinisoftware.com and simply sign up. And when you sign up and log in, you can just press the trial button and you can try this uh, disperse or any of our tools for 30 days. So thanks a lot guys. Appreciate it. See ya.